Yo, yo, designers, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jimmy. Okay, so I really just want to jump right into it and show you guys this extremely awesome portfolio by one of my past students. But before we jump right into it, I just kind of want to talk about what a portfolio actually is, how to apply for a job and the things that you're going to need in order to do so, right? Because as we're working hard, we're learning all our skills, we're going to school, watching my YouTube videos, we hopefully want to land a job and build a career of industrial design, right? And maybe you want to start your own business, which I would say awesome, great for you, but I would recommend you go get a real job maybe for one to two years and actually gain a little bit of real world experience, then maybe go ahead and start your actual business. What is a portfolio? Where well, it's going to be one of those very critical things that you're going to need on top of a couple of other things in order to apply for a job. So what are these other things? Well, one of them is a resume. A resume is essentially just a one page list of the jobs that you've had in the past and some of the skills that you have as well as maybe some accomplishments and some contact information. The second thing you're gonna need is gonna be probably like a cover letter, which some applications require it, some don't. So a cover letter is essentially just kind of like a three quarter page, half a page written out of a essentially who you are, why you want to apply for the job, why you like the company, maybe some of your processes and your passions for industrial design. Okay, so that's a cover letter. And of course, the third thing is going to be a portfolio. So the portfolio is essentially showing your work and how good you actually are. This is the reason why you want to do the best you possibly can. You want to spend as much time as you can to curate and make this portfolio the best you possibly can get it, okay? And you, the idea is you wanna be undeniable. When a lot of these employers put out these listings, they get tons of applications. A lot of these people that apply for these jobs, most of them aren't gonna be very good, okay? If there's, you know, 25 applicants, probably only one or two might be, you know, good for the job. You want to have yours be one, of those very standout portfolios in order to you know shine amongst the rest in order for you to get that interview you know and land that job okay so that is the reason why you want your portfolio to be awesome so i'm going to show you guys this portfolio here there are 3 to 4 different projects in there. So I'm going to go ahead and break this video up into a couple of pieces or else this video is going to be way too long. So definitely you can go ahead and reference this one to understand the things that you're going to need, you know, the things that you should show within this portfolio. So a little bit more about the portfolio. It really should be curated to the job that you're actually applying to. What does that mean? Well, if you're applying to like a consumer electronics job, you don't want to be showing a lot of furniture, a lot of car designs you did, a lot of artwork that you've done in the past, you really wanna show work that is relevant to this job that you're applying to so that the potential employer can kind of visualize the work that you've done in the past and kind of see a very clear path between that and what you can do for them. If you're doing a lot of car stuff and they're doing a lot of like small handheld electronics, that's not gonna really work out. It's gonna be difficult for them to be like, they can design cars really well, but can they design our stuff very well, you know? So you don't wanna have such a scattered mix match portfolio. You want it to be very focused and very curated, all right? So that is essentially the three things that you need in order to apply for this job, okay? There's actually gonna be a fourth thing and I'm gonna go ahead and mention it towards the end of this video. So definitely stick around if you wanna hear what that fourth thing is, which is just as equally as important as the resume, the cover letter, and your portfolio. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the computer and check out Austin Powell's portfolio. All right, guys, so we're here at Austin Powell's Industrial Design Portfolio. This is gonna be his very first project in his portfolio. So I'm gonna go ahead and break up some of the projects within his portfolio in different videos so you haven't yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss the next one, okay? And uh, I really appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that like button. It would really help me out and help out this video for the YouTube algorithm, of course. All right, so um, this is gonna be Austin's reverb project and this is going to be a project that he made in my class last year now he is a senior almost about to graduate shout out to austin for allowing me to share his work with you guys he doesn't have any social media pages no behance page no instagram page so this is actually going to be a pretty rare sight to see some of his work so i hope you guys appreciate me bringing this to you okay so when I tell my students to uh, make a project for me and for the final submission, I honestly want them to submit to me a PDF 
of a very thorough presentation of their products and I want them to make sure that it is the quality to where they can submit it to potential employers in the future. I know a lot of professors out there, if you're a professor, please hear me out. A lot of these projects that are being given to these students, they work really hard on them, but at the end of the day, sometimes it's very difficult to put it in a portfolio to show a potential employer. So what I wanted to do was really solve that problem and have these students submit to me a portfolio that they can immediately turn around and show it to a potential employer. So this is going to be an example of that. So right here is going to be a cover sheet. A cover sheet is just going to be, you know, the logo kind of like beautiful renderings of what this product is all about okay when a person views your portfolio when the employer views your portfolio what they want to see is what you designed okay maybe they don't want to know every single detail of it right away but they kind of just want to know what it is so this is why I have them create this cover sheet and really just have a beautiful rendering of what the product actually is and this will draw in the viewer if you especially have a beautiful rendering like what Austin did here so this is going to be the next page it's it's going to be the branding page. So I had them pick a company that they really liked and design a product for that company. So Austin here picked B&O and this is kind of just a small little breakdown of what B&O actually is, you know, what they're all about, okay? And you always want to have some kind of visualization. So he has some really cool pictures here with some great colors to them and just a very short snippet, nothing, nothing too long. You don't want to be too wordy, okay? You want to be very simple because when they're viewing your portfolio, they're not going to spend a lot of time reading every single word. They're going to really flip through it quick Okay, so you want to have some cool visualizations and you want to keep things very tidy and very simple. The next page I had them make was a trends page. And this is just going to be, you know, just some of the reasons why you are designing what you're designing, some of the research, some of the background kind of information. So I love how Austin just presented this very simply with a couple of icons and some description words down at the bottom. And if any employer wants to read it, they can go ahead and do so. And then, of course, the goal, what are you designing? You know, be very clear about it and don't write too much so designing a hearing aid for BNO that is extremely approachable by consumers while still being able to remedy mild to moderate hearing loss so you know just be very clear about what you are designing. And again, he has a cool little visual icon right above there. And then the next thing I wanted them to do was also give me a page showing the competitors. The competitors, you know, when you're designing anything, you're probably going to be looking at whatever is already on the market. And so you're going to want to see the things that they've done, study them, and of course, try to improve upon them with your own solution. Okay, so this is the small pros and cons breakdown of each kind of solution that's already on on the market. This is going to be a mood board of some of the visuals that Austin's going to try to apply to his own design. You know, so go online, go on Behance, go on Pinterest, go ahead and look at some of the things that you really like about certain products already out there, some of the details, some of the color material finishes. In the industrial design world, we call that a CMF, color material and finishes. And then, you know, just gain that inspiration so that you can apply that to your own product. So we can see here, Austin did this beautiful grid layout here of some of the images that he found online. Okay, and then of course, we can't have a portfolio without having sketching okay so the ideation is what we call it and essentially you want to show that you can sketch now um, actual you know industrial design process when you're a pro you know you might not sketch too much it might not be a critical part of your process but in a portfolio you really want to show some sketches you want to show some nice beautiful sketches and a beautiful presentation okay and so it Austin here it looks like he did it with some digital sketching but you know sometimes you can also do manual sketchings where you have it on a piece of paper, take a photo of it and and present it, okay? So there's a lot of different ways to show sketching and you could go on Behance and, and kind of reference how other people show their sketches, okay? But you really want to show sketches because uh, employers, they, they just want to know if you can sketch and they want to see beautiful sketches because, you know, a lot of the times that's the first thing people think of as industrial design is, you know, the sketching part. After sketching, you jump right into CAD and so Austin is showing some of the visuals of the CADs that he essentially developed and so 
we can see different kind of iterations of different forms, different shapes that he's come up with. Okay, so we have this kind of more earbud kind of design. We have this more geometric kind of design. I remember when he submitted this to us and we were really thinking about, you know, how do we refine this and make it look better? And, you know, here it's getting a little bit closer to the finished product. And then of course here is getting very, very close to the finished thing. So it's really important to show some of the iterations that you've gone through and you don't want to just show that the final kind of thing because um, uh, you want to show that you explored a lot of different options to finally get to the one that you got to which hopefully you think is the best solution. So here now that Austin kind of had a very close form of what he was going for we can see that he's done some prototyping. Now this is going to be very important it's going to go be kind of going above and beyond and when you show this in your portfolio in a beautiful way a lot of employers are going to really appreciate it because you know one it only it not only shows that you have designed a beautiful thing a beautiful product but also that you've actually tested it you know so you can see here that he's testing it within his own kind of ear just to you know determine if it's comfortable does it fit well does he need to change anything so that's the reason why people have prototypes and of course 3d printing is you know the quickest fastest nicest way to do so of course you can have paper mock-ups you can have cardboard mock-ups you can have foam shaping however you want to do it but it's very critical to show some kind of a prototyping some kind of a mock-up it also kind of helps show some of the scale as well and how it fits on the body if your product that you're designing you know fits on the body just like Austin's here so here is another shot where I had them make it's gonna be a kind of like an engineering kind of shot where I really want them to show the different views of their product in the most simplest way which is going to be a top view a front view and then the side view allow the viewer to kind of see all the different kind of angles and really understand the product. An exploded view is a very important thing to also have as well in your portfolio because you know all the things that we've kind of showed already was more of the design and the development but the exploded view really kind of shares with the viewer that this thing is kind of engineered. Now this project wasn't 100% engineered because we really only worked on this product for about you know a month and a half to two months so when you really engineer something and you create a final finished product you know that is manufacturable that can take a lot of months to even years to do so. So uh, you want to really show some of the exploded views here in the different parts and the different materials and finishes and how it all kind of comes together. And you put a lot of thought into the internals and stuff like that, understanding how this product actually works. It just shows that you are more than just a designer. You're thinking about how this product is made, all the different parts and how it comes together. So this is going to be a close-up shot. So I requested to have them do these very close-up shots about showing showing off certain kind of parts and certain kind of features because you don't want to just have you know a a hero shot of just the whole thing sometimes you want to show off a certain feature show off a certain detail that you've done again continuing off with some of the beautiful things such as the interface that he's paid a lot of attention to we can see that just even something simple as this button here with all the different kind of finishes he has you know more of a matte gold finish and then more of a spun metal shiny finish and then going back to a more matte finish sitting within this plate here which is a different finish than the actual product itself we can see the detailing on the dial that he's created and all of the graphics as well so just these very little details you know even the logo here and all of this plus and minus you really want to show stuff like that show that you pay a lot of attention to detail to these employers even though this is a school project even though this is not going to be manufactured and fully made you know but you really want to get these render and this design thorough as close as possible to what the final thing actually would be. Okay, now this is actually going to how this product works within a mechanical level, okay? So this is gonna be a shot of, you know, this part it detaches to that part and it shows arrows of how it does so. It has a magnet call out and then, you know, this part turns and swivels so that it could get it to the proper angle and this part here swivels so that you could get it, you know, just right within your ear. So you really want to show some of these mechanical features and I really like how Austin showed this where it kind of just like is a fade away of the different positions of where this earbud could possibly be. So you want to show your product, how it articulates, how it moves, how it 
disassembles the different forms that it could go in. You want to show that in your portfolio. And then here is the accessories shot. So just, you know, now that we've seen the product itself, what are some of the other things that you can also show, you know? So in Austin's case here, he showed some of the ear tips that it could possibly come with in order to get it just right within your ear. You know, maybe some variations in this end piece right here, as well as a charging case. Okay, so you really want to kind of just make this product again as real as possible. Maybe you can show some packaging of it or it's sitting on some shelves or just even accessories like what Austin did here. But again, just bringing your product, bringing your design to real life. So this page here is going to be a color study page. So of course we have the initial gold color, but then what could it possibly look like if your product came in a couple of different colors, a couple different finishes. So, you know, this is a cool way Austin kind of called out the different colors that he selected. And it's just kind of a very fun page to have. And then this page here is going to be an in-use lifestyle shot. Okay, this shot is very important because it just brings your product to life. Sometimes we just don't want to only see renderings of your product. We want it to see it come to life. We want it to be, you know, see it in use. So we can see Austin here applied his design to a couple different models here. And what's really great about this is not only does it bring it to life, but it also kind of shows the scale of their product as well. And because, you know, when you're seeing these huge renderings filling up the whole monitor, it's sometimes it's hard to tell how big the product actually is in a lot of cases. So you really want to put it into its context. Sometimes you want to put it on the human body if it does interface with the human body, or sometimes you want to just show it within the daily environment of where this product will actually be. So in this case, Austin went ahead and put it on a desktop here, you know, maybe somebody's work area with their laptop, their coffee, how this product is going to live on a day to day basis. And then finally, here is a finishing shot, bringing it all back, showing a beautiful shot of the product itself, you know, ending on a strong note. So this is going to be a little sneak peek into the next video of the project that I'll be going over with you guys. So if you haven't yet, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it. All right, guys. So what do you guys think about Austin's first project in his portfolio? Trust me, guys, it just keeps getting better after that. So definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss the next video. But I really appreciate Austin allowing me to show you his work. And I hope you guys took a lot away from it. And make sure for yourself to take notes on what context and what information to show on each and every page so that you can really show off your product, show off your design in a very thorough presentation. Always again, make sure to have those renderings look great. Always make sure to have your graphics design look good. Keep it nice and simple as far as the wordings and the graphics and all that good stuff. Okay. And make sure everything is high quality, you know, 300 DPI, whatever you have to do to make everything look really, really nice. Okay. All right. So the very last thing that I was going to explain to you guys, what you need in order to apply for a job listing is of course, again, just going back to it one the resume two the cover letter three your portfolio but then what is that fourth thing well the fourth thing is really about you. You need to be on top of your personal game. Of course, this is gonna be like good hygiene. You gotta dress well and you gotta speak well, okay? You gotta be sharp. You gotta show that you are confident. You know, even with having a extremely great resume, even having a super, super awesome cover letter and portfolio, if you come in there looking, you know, not so great, if you don't seem sharp, if you don't look like you can work well with the team, you're just not gonna to get the job okay so that is going to be a very critical part for you to focus on if you are lacking that kind of speaking skills and confidence kind of exuding skills you know that's really going to be a very critical thing because i know a lot of designers out there who are really really great who have the skills who have the portfolio but it's just really hard for me to recommend them for a certain job because i know that their personality is just not a kind of people person kind of personality maybe they they don't seem to have the confidence or they don't speak well and those are going to be things that you shouldn't really look over all right guys so that is about it for this video if you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two definitely hit that thumbs up button it'll really help me out also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave me a comment down below if there's anything you'd like me to talk about you know leave some nice words for austin i'm sure he's going to watch this video and he's going to read the comments all right guys see you in the next video peace